fans, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you are. Welcome to the Conversation Live show with Brigitte Limbanda, and our special guest today is Dr. Jacques Ludic. He's a smart technology entrepreneur, artificial intelligence expert, and an investor. Dr. Ludic has a PhD in computer science with roughly 25 plus years experience. He is the founder and CEO of Cortex Logic, as well as the founder and president of the Machine Intelligence Institute of Africa. In addition, he also founded CSense Systems, Africa's first AI company that was sold to General Electric in 2011. Cortex Logic, as a company, is a South African AI software and solutions company that helps businesses thrive in the smart technology era. It helps companies leverage data science, Internet of Things, and big data and analytics. Cortex Logic has recently secured a major investment to expand into the international market. Dr. Ludic has also won an award for AI Leader of the Year. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Brigitte. And welcome. Good morning, Jacques. How are you? I'm doing fine, Brigitte, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, it's great, great to talk to you. It's a pleasure. Great to have you as a guest on the conversation live today. Congratulations on the on the award and the expansion onto the international um, market. So, tell us what is it that inspired you to start Cortex Logic. Yeah, it's got actually, there's a little bit of history there. Um, I actually got inspired by some of the visionary leaders in, in Africa as well. Um, but uh, just going back, so I, I did my PhD in artificial intelligence, obviously inspired by what you can do with smart technology. And uh, you've mentioned CSIN Systems. So that was my first AI company that I sold to General Electric. And I was kind of operating in the, in the AI winter period. But what inspired me to, to actually start Cortex Logic, which is a next generation AI company, is, is the ability to actually help businesses thrive in the smart technology era. And, and that goes back to my uh, massive transformative purpose in business, which is really to help shape a better future in the smart technology era. And when I talk about the smart technology era, it's, uh, it's actually, you probably know the term fourth industrial revolution. So it's just, uh, it's just my term for the fourth industrial revolution. And I just think it's not just industrial. It's, it's really affecting all disciplines, uh, all industries. Um, and it's not just artificial intelligence. And that's why I talk about smart technology as well, because there's so many other types of exponential technologies. Obviously, AI is probably the, the, the most exponential one and the one with, with the biggest impact, likely. Uh, but there's there's blockchain, there's there's IoT that's that is that it's also very very important because it's it's giving it's almost like instrumenting the world. It's giving more. It's it's providing sensors to the world so that we can connect to that and it provides us with data that we can help unlock value with. Um, so so it's it's unbelievable. So just to your question. Um, Absolutely inspired by what one can do with these technologies, and obviously, I've with with CSIN systems, we've seen the, the real world applications. We've seen um, the benefit to say the industrial sector, for instance, where one, two, three, four, five percent in throughput yield um, a quality, for instance, if you think about manufacturing, means millions of dollars, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to those companies. If you can make a change where you where you actually build predictive models that tell you when this particular process or piece of equipment is going to have a problem, for instance, and you can um, make sure that there's no shutdowns, unnecessary shutdowns, for instance, or if you can stabilize a process, all of that translates to lots of uh, value. But now we're sitting in, uh, in, in, in really the AI era where we've got not only the sensor data, but we've got social media, we've got so much unstructured data, audio, video, text available, and the technology is now mature enough to actually unlock value with that. So um, it's, it's a, a tremendous responsibility, but it's an incredible opportunity to, to actually build kind of platform businesses, to build exponential organizations. And uh, that's why it's so exciting. I, I just see... Um, I've obviously built my career, my expertise is in artificial intelligence and so forth, but how can we use this technology to help shape a better world? How can we use this technology to actually help businesses thrive? 
Because what we see is some businesses that's actually not data-driven or AI-driven will be left behind. So it's very, very it's imperative for them to actually change their ways. And we, are, we can be an AI partner for those businesses um, to actually help them thrive. Not only survive, but thrive. And, uh, but apart from that, you also get the disruptors. So we are like an AI engine for the new disruptors, these new platform right. businesses. So and I, I can dig more into that later on as well. So what, is, what role does Cortex as a company play in the AI space? Yeah, so I think the key thing, I think the problem that we find when we engage with customers, and I was just this morning at two customers as well, um, it's they, they struggle to operationalize AI. And if you think about AI-driven digital transformation, there's the five pillars. Um, the one is obviously the, the business cases, the sources of value. Why do you actually do that? but then people process this data technology. So what we do is, is to actually say within that holistic framework, we can come in and provide quick win solutions and operationalize AI for you and show the value. So you can actually see this is actually, this is what it means to my bottom line. And, or you show how you make the, the company more efficient. So, so there's so many different ways where we can help the business and unlock the value from the data. So you think you may be in this kind of business, but the, your data, is putting you in a position to actually compete in another area potentially, or it can actually help your, you um, drive the business forward in a much more quicker way um, and, and more proactive way. So there's, there's so much that one can do, and I can unpack a little bit more, but I think that in a nutshell, we are an AI engine for business, and we are really focused on operationalizing AI end-to-end. And that means that obviously we not only do AI, but we do all the things that's needed to create the end-to-end -end solutions that actually do something. And if you think about, say, Amazon, the way they do recommendation engines, so we can do the same type of thing for businesses. So they can actually do on-demand, personalized offerings to customers um, and in a more personalized way, in a more effective way. Um, so you can do much better targeted sales and marketing, uh, for instance, as well. So, um, Jacques, a lot of people, or a lot of companies rather, sit on huge amounts of, of data um, that's just literally sitting there. Yeah. How does AI help them to unlock that uh, value that's simply sitting there on a machine? You're right. Good question. So, and, and well, that's where it starts. So, all the, if you look at AI, AI is a big term. What does it mean? Well, you get different types of AI. You get maybe more rules-based kind of systems. But I think where the excitement is, is really around machine learning and, say, deep learning, which is a subset of machine learning-based systems, which is really data-driven systems. And then the beauty of these systems and the, and the technology and the state of technology where we are right now is that we can unlock value from all available structured or unstructured data. So structured data is typical thing, things that sits in Excel. Say if you look at data in Excel, for instance, that looks very relational. It's got columns and rows. Um, you've got maybe a client demographic information. You've got age. You've got salary. You've got address. You've got those type of information. That's an example of, of structured data, So which could be text or it could be numerical. But then you've got unstructured data, which is like text messages, or it could be um, audio, video. But so you've got now state of the art machine learning or deep learning that you can apply to the unstructured data, the audio, video, and text that you can utilize to actually provide better services to customers. So your question is, how do you unlock it? So first of all, you need rapid access to all available data. So once you've got access, you're obviously going to prepare the data. Um, in, and, and you prepare the data in such a way that you obviously need to train these systems. You train the models, and, and to train the models, you obviously need to say, what, what is the use case? Am I do, uh, building a predictive model? Say a recommendation. Say it's uh, Netflix or Amazon. I want to predict what's the, given what you like, what you like in the past, given the type of person that you are, or maybe your client demographic information and stuff, given your behavioral information, the way you interact with systems and so forth, it can make a recommendation that you would likely also um, like this and this and this. 
So it can come up with very specific recommendations to do cross-selling, upselling, um, and have a confidence. There's a probability associated with that you need that you probably like this. So we can come up with very specific things. So now, just to give you an idea, so obviously you can utilize the structured data, the the the, the specific client demographic, and maybe transactional data. Transactional data is also examples of 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 relational data as well. So you can all link it to that individual. But then, say you communicate via WhatsApp or Messenger or Telegram, and you've got very specific things that you communicate there. You can punish them. It can actually do something. And it, uh, maybe you communicate things that you like. So we can extract entities or information from there. And in the future, when we communicate, we can actually utilize that and then make it more personalized. Um, so, so there's so many, many opportunities. Now, if you think about video, we already apply. We've got AI vision solutions. Now, we'll get into the solutions sh shortly. But if if we if you think about just if, just the way I'm looking at you, you're looking at me, but we can look at emotion straight away. So you can obviously look at sentiment and emotion and text, but you can also look at the individual, and you can extract a lot of information from just looking. Um, at stuff, so you can have machine learning that's also just looking at this picture and making all sorts of deductions from that, and you can utilize that information. And it's not just about that information that you extract; it's also maybe it's in context of what we do here. Maybe it's I'm in a shop and I want to buy something. I'm standing in front of something here. I've got a camera that looks at me, um, and you can see, oh, this person really likes this or not. Um, and maybe at this time of day, I see this kind of preferences. So there's so many uh, different dimensions to this where you can extract information and, and, and build models. So the key thing is um, you can now build models not only of customer behavior, but you can build models of processes. Um, you can build models of piece of equipment. And all you need for that is the available data that we store in, 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 uh, in databases, effectively. Um, and, and just to give you an idea, if you think about, yeah, so data, first of all, data generation is really going exponential. And the reason for that is obviously we instrument the world more with more and more sensors. If you think about Tesla and you think about all the sensors that sits in a self-driving car, we'll, just to look at the surroundings and inside, outside. If you think about your phone, your phone is really like a sensor on you because it provides Google and a lot of other apps and companies with tremendous amount of information around what you do. Um, and that information is valuable in terms of helping them to figure out your needs and your requirements and so forth. And you can use that information to actually provide better services. So, um, okay, so, 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 so basically what's happening here, data is being generated at an exponential rate Data utilization is really still linear, and that gap is increasing all the time. Um, so back to companies like Cortex Logic, they can actually say, we can help unlock the value from all available structured to unstructured data to actually unlock the value for you. And uh, that's the challenge, is how do you do that? And to do that, you need the right people. You need data engineers, data architects. You need, obviously, your AI, machine learning people. You need software developers. Um, so we are employing all those people, also business analysts, people that understand the business case, or I can at least figure it out and make sure we can def define a proper minimum viable solution or minimum viable product for the customer. Um, so it's a combination of uh, people that you need. And also, I think it's important to understand what the customer um, also, what's the infrastructure like, what are there, what are the limits there, what, what, are, they, what are the gaps there and then you you make it whole and we come in as a partner to actually help enable them to accelerate things um so yeah it's a long answer but it gives you kind of a perspective of how to unlock data value from from data uh, from structured and unstructured data shop that ties in very well with my next question what about complex business um yes. problems yes. how do you use ai to unlock complex you know um Problems yes. for large corporates. Yes. Now this is where it's 
um, how do you eat an elephant bit by bit? Okay, we don't want to eat elephants, but but so basically, a complex problem can typically be built up with smaller little problems. You can break it down. Um, so there's multiple ways of tackling this. Now, an example of a complex problem uh, it could be something where you need to optimize. You've got certain constraints, and uh, I, I want to optimize this process. Um, and again, if you've got the, the system, say you want to optimize a process or a supply chain. You can't optimize the supply chain if you haven't instrumented that, if you don't have the data available. So the first thing, if it's a very complex problem, is to, to make sure that you instrument whatever system you want to model. You want to make sure you instrument that in a proper way. So we can help with that as well. But you need to capture the data as well. But I think very important to actually define the outcomes define exactly what is the constraint, what is the, 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 the value that you want to unlock, what is the thing that you want to optimize, what does that cost function, benefit function look like. Um, and if you think about, uh, there were some uh, people that's more familiar with machine learning and some of the recent breakthroughs. If you think about what deep learning did with AlphaGo, AlphaZero, if you think about StarCraft, if you think about all these games where they optimize, and it's kind of complex problems, is what is the right actions right now to actually get to a winning position, to actually win? And in that case, you actually have a score to indicate, are you, maybe, say it's a game that you play, and you can clearly see I'm winning or not. So you can apply technology like reinforced, deep reinforcement learning, Monte Carlo search, all these components, and you can actually say, for this particular problem, I can actually define uh, a penalty reward system and I'm actually heading in the right direction. So you can deploy uh, those type of technology to solve that type of thing. Um, but again, um, it, that is very confined, it's very specific space, it's a game, this is the board, this is the environment. And if you want to do the same type of thing in the real world, you also need to say, okay, this is my objective function, this is the constraints, this is the space where I can operate in. Um, this is the kind of moves that I can make, um, and how can I use a system to help uh, to help me figure out the best strategy, for instance. But to do any of that, you need to actually get data. You need to generate the data around this. You need to instrument the business, and then you can figure out, there's my toolbox. What is the applicable technologies to actually solve this problem? And if you think about all the breakthroughs uh, the last number of years, it's it's actually using... Current technology, maybe there's some refinements in the algorithms, but it's actually engineered solutions. It's actually using um, the machine, the AI toolbox, like uh, like Lego blocks, and it's using this component, say deep reinforcement learning, with say Monte Carlo search, maybe with this, with that, or, um, and and you create a solution. If you look at generative adversarial neural nets, for instance, using different components. So so I think if you look at the brain. The brain consists of multiple components and working in unison. Um, and, and I think we will eventually create more stronger and stronger and cl more clever systems that uses these building blocks in a clever way. And, and obviously with, with the applications, we don't need to do it exactly the same way the brain works. You can actually build systems that actually, if you know the strength of the various toolbox, tools in your toolbox, you can actually put it together and engineer a solution that gives you superhuman performance or give you the, the benefits that you're looking for. So, so it's, I think it's very important to have the right people with the right skills that understands the deep learning or the, the AI toolbox, that understands how to work with data, that also know how to engage with the domain experts, uh, the people that knows uh, about their specific problem. That's why it's always kind of a partnership. Talking to the, the other people as well, they know their problems, they know their needs. Then you bring the technology side, the data side, and you can together you can come up with, with those kind of solutions. So it's very exciting. It's like there's the problems. How can we solve it? So we're constantly in this problem solving mode, and and thinking about solutions and how we can use our solutions and put it in there. And so the other that leads me to my next um, question, which is more of a congratulations to Cortex. You've recently expanded into the international market. Um, yeah. How did that happen, and how does that benefit Cortex um, here in South Africa? And how will it benefit your clients um, having been able to expand into the international market? 
Yeah, so so it's almost like a similar story, uh, except it's a different era. Uh, with CSense, we built locally successful solutions and then expanded internationally to Australia. We were very much in the minerals, metals, mining space, for instance, as well. And then took those solutions and took it to all the different continents. And, and we had distribution solution partners that helped to expand. Now, with Cortex, how it helps our customers as well, first of all, we're like a magnet for the top talent. So we, we, we do have the Machine Intelligence Institute of Africa, which is, uh, which is a non-profit organization. Anyone can utilize that. That's something else that I've also founded. Um, but but court, companies like Cortex can also tap into the talent that's there and also in other AI communities. So very important. I think funding provides us with the opportunity to actually make sure that we've got world-class uh, people. And we, we will need world-class people if we deploy, if we want to compete internationally. So we don't want Africa to be left behind. We can provide African solutions that's competitive and that we can take out, uh, so that we can scale internationally and and that we can uh, yeah, scale and roll out internationally. So that's the aim is to actually build exponential organization, build scalable products and solutions that we can roll out internationally. Now, we do have even customers here in South Africa with international footprint. We also have partners here with international footprint. So we've got solutions that we implement here. We can roll that out via their international footprints as well. So we always believe in this collaborative channel approach. Um, so, and we are very careful in selecting the right, um, you can't, you, we can't do everything. So it's very select, we are very selective and thinking about the very specific opportunities that could be very scalable. And we obviously need to think about the market um, as well internationally. Can we win? Where can we where can we really win? And what areas can we? What industries are are the good industry to, to tackle? So for us, finance very important. We also have a state of the art AI based trading solution, which is kind of separate to Cortex Logic, but we can utilize some of the AI expertise that we've got. Uh, we are also into healthcare, like precision medicine for oncology or biotech. So so that's another big application area. Um, and then telecoms, retail, um, obviously mining minerals, metals, manufacturing, that's a big part of my history as well. Um, so we've got a lot of experience in terms of implementing solutions there as well. So I, I think it's we, what, what it helps us as well. We can be a true AI partner for the long run and um, for, for big corporates and enterprises, but also for the disruptors. So basically burning the candle from two sides. So we want to be part, we want to make enterprises winning enterprises, the incumbents, but we also want to help the platform businesses um, to be uh, super effective. And all of them, all these new platform businesses are data driven. So they need AI expertise, they need AI engine, and we can provide that AI engine for them as well. So, so we think holistically about this. We want businesses to thrive in the smart technology era. And we're positioning ourselves to actually do that. Um, yeah, so so there's, yeah, pretty exciting. Um, yeah, uh, that's probably the answer in a nutshell. And have you had any sort of recent innovations um, within Cortex that you would like to, to mention briefly? Yeah, we're constantly innovating, so we, we have to. <laughs> and uh, we are challenged with some incredible exciting opportunities it was just over the weekend we were introduced to opportunities that can revolutionize um, things on multiple industries as well so um, so it's so just quickly in terms of the things maybe just quickly about the products where we innovate so that we've got four solutions categories so the first one is really around engage so if you think about AI the applications of AI clearly you can unlock you can build models of, 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 of behavior, customer behavior, we can build models of, of processes or equipment, etc. So that's one thing to unlock insights and get information to models, model um, uh, a process or people. The power of that is once you've got models, you've got something powerful because you can actually now apply it. You can actually use the predictions. You can use it also for prescriptive analytics, for cognitive analytics. So, so that is one big thing. Um, but our first product collusion category is really around engage and engage is about helping people and businesses work smarter at scale. So it's things like, for instance, people, all tedious things, say email, say you've got 
people that need to listen to d digital recordings to figure out did they say the right thing. You can have machine learning listening to that. Y uh, people reading through emails that's maybe very laborious or tedious and, and it's very basic stuff. You can have machine learning reading that, replying, doing, putting things into buckets, and then the people can look at the exceptions and deal with that, you can work with this on a higher level. So, so Engage is, is really helping businesses and, and people working at scale. So we've got AA email, AA assist, we implement intelligent virtual assistants and so forth. On the personalized side, it's very important. There you need to mine the data around the individuals, around customers. And you can do, we've got AI churn, for instance, at looking at churn prediction. We also have something very interesting called AI price, which is really dynamic price. You determine the dynamic price, real-time price for an individual at a specific point in time. Um, which is uh, which is uh, is really we are very excited about that as well, and then there's things like enhance. Enhance is really smart automation and enhancements of business processes and systems. And the final category is sense, which is the audio, the video, uh, all of that, where we're enabling smart machines to sense and interpret the world around us. So we're very excited about that. We're actually rolling out our AI vision and AI uh, audio solutions with some of the big corporates and uh, very exciting applications. One, one application, I maybe quickly mention that is in security, um, where you actually um, look, do, look at anomaly detection or you do facial recognition, you can actually um, do tracking of people or, or whatever, um, and you can, uh, you can actually gain insights from that and generate alerts as well. So, Anyway, so the, the point is to operationalize that and to scale with those kind of things. So there's a lot, lots of innovation on multiple levels. Um, pretty much focus for us right now in, into these four solution categories. Jacques, thanks very much. You've actually answered my final question, which was which industries um, yes. AI can be applied in. So thanks for answering yes. that, that as well. Um, yes. Jacques, how can people get hold of you via your website? Yes, so you can go to cortexlogic.com. Um, my email is, is very easy, it's jock at cortexlogic.com. Uh, also, you can also get me um, on the Machine Intelligence Institute of Africa at jock at machineintelligenceafrica.org. Um, and uh, yeah, that's as simple as that. I'm also on LinkedIn, so people can connect on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. Um, so most welcome to, to utilize those channels as well. Fantastic, Jacques. Thanks so much for being a guest on the Conversation Live show. I want to thank everyone who's watched us live today. And also thank you to everyone watching the show on the replay. Can I please ask you to share the broadcast? Um, we've had some excellent insight into AI and how you as a company can benefit from, in, from um, using AI in your business in all the various industries that we have mentioned. Jacques, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for watching today. Thank you very much. Pleasure, pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.